Hello, everyone. Welcome to what I'm sure will be the most popular session of ApacheCon in 2020, maybe even the entire history of ApacheCons, building Apache Open Office on Mac OS. I know it's one that has been just uh, clamored for by huge amounts of the population out there. So I'm really, really proud to be able to be uh, presenting this for you uh, today. Hope everyone's having a great and fantastic uh, uh, session. Uh, really impressed with how ApacheCon is going this year. Hoping everyone is also staying safe as well. Uh, a little bit about me. My name is uh, Jim Jagelski. Uh, I've been with the ASF for a very, very long period of time after being in the Apache group and one of the co-founders of the ASF. Uh, I believe I was a mentor for uh, Apache Open Office and have been on the PMC since then. Uh, recently, I've been the release manager for a number, I guess maybe three Apache Open Office uh, releases and have also provided the community builds for the Linux 64 and Linux 32 builds, as well as Mac OS. Uh, Apache Open Office is sort of like the uh, Schrodinger's cat, I guess, of open source projects. Is it live? Is it dead? Uh, it's very, very much alive. Uh, just a little editorial comment. I am a firm believer that the world needs a uh, permissively licensed uh, office suite. I, I think it's vitally important uh, out there for there to be uh, a, an office suite that has as few restrictions on poss as possible, as well as enables people to do basically anything at all they want to do with it. So I think uh, even if that was just it, I think there is a real purpose and a real need for Apache Open Office. But the other thing that I think is also very, very important, uh, and we'll notice this when we start getting into the actual build process, for uh, uh, open office is that uh, not only does the world need a permissively licensed office suite, but it also needs one which is available to huge um, uh, sections of the population, which are not lucky enough or fortunate enough or rich enough or well off enough uh, or you know uh, advantaged enough to have uh, the latest and greatest uh, systems, the latest and greatest operating systems, large amounts of memory, large amounts of RAM, uh, things of that nature. Uh, huge populations need something which will run on basically old platforms, old OSs, and stuff like that. Uh, and I think that uh, Open Office is sort of like fills that niche as well. Uh, it really is meant to do that. And in fact, what you'll see when we build our community provided versions, uh, we build them with the expectation that they will be running on extremely old versions of Linux, uh, BSD, uh, Mac OS, and things like that. Uh, and in some ways that kind of like um, directs or guides the, uh, the building process, at least for the community builds. And we'll, I'll mention those as we go into it. Um, I'm sharing the screen right now. I'm trying this, uh, this session a little bit differently. I'm not gonna go through any slides. I'm actually gonna go through an actual build process. Now, um, even on fast machines, the build for open office will take a handful of hours. So we're not gonna go through all of that, but I do wanna provide a, a guide, a clue on how to build not only on Mac OS, but also on other operating systems as well, even though we will be focusing on Mac OS. So um, that is the, the main website right there that you can see. I do now want to switch over to a, uh, a different slide. Uh, uh, this is basically 
on the ASF uh, uh, page, on the ASF wiki for, uh, for Apache Open Office, we do have this uh, extremely good guide as far as how to build uh, Apache Open Office for a variety of platforms out there. So let's actually start going through some of the detail uh, inside of this. You know, first of all, uh, what we need to do is actually get the source code itself. Now, up until very, very recently, uh, the canonical location for uh, all the open source uh, that was under Apache Open Office was under SVN. But recently, we switched over to Gitbox, uh, which is also hosted on, on GitHub as well. So to basically grab it, you need to do a Git clone of this particular uh, repo uh, right there. Um, and I'll show you how we're actually doing that now in this particular case. So I will be switching over to my um, to my platform right here. Now for uh, for Mac OS, I am running this on a VMware uh, partition. Um, this enables me to really lock down uh, the the environment and just have things installed there as much as uh, as much or as little as I need. As I said before, I do the community builds. And so having this lockdown is really, really important for consistency. Obviously, when you're building uh, open office for your Mac OS system, you don't need to do that. So some of that stuff, you can just run it uh, as is. But uh, in this particular case, I do have it, have it locked down. Um, and as you see, I, I certainly have right now uh, a clone of the uh, Open Office 4.2x, you know, which is basically the next release coming up. I could also be doing Trunk, for example. Uh, I won't do 4.1.8 because that's basically an older version. I don't anticipate many uh, many people actually building that from scratch, but most of the guidelines will be uh, very, very similar. I will talk about some of the little gotchas as far as that's concerned. But for this particular case, I'll just be looking at uh, 4.2x, uh, which also is the very, very similar to the um, you know, version that you'd be running if you're doing uh, trunk as well. So we see that right there, which is fantastic. I will get back now to the actual Prezo slide itself. Wishing was a, just a little bit easier to switch from uh, share to share, but we will definitely make through it. Well, we know. So uh, for Mac OS, there are some build requirements that we need uh, to worry about. First of all, um, if you're building on 4.1, you know, building 4, uh, 4.1 dot uh, whatever, uh, because that older version uses QuickTime, um, and requires uh, Apple's QuickTime SDK and framework associated with it, you really need access uh, to either an older version of Xcode. Uh, for example, Xcode 7 uh, includes that, or a later version of, uh, of Xcode, but using this cool, neat little utility called Xcode Legacy, which is this one uh, right here which basically allows you to download and install older versions of SDKs. For example, the SDK for 10.7, 10.8, 10.9, whatever, and install them inside of there. So you can use the, uh, the newer compilers, uh, the newer uh, you know, uh, frameworks and stuff like that. But for the things that require older legacy SDKs, you can access that, that as well. And you definitely do need that for building uh, 4.1. For 2.2 for two and trunk, you really, really don't. You can just build it uh, as is for uh, the later versions of, of Xcode inside of there. Uh, you also do need some necessary tools as well, and we'll talk about those. Uh, for example, even if you do install Xcode, even if you do install the, uh, the uh, um, uh, command line tools for Xcode, which adds compilers and things like that, 
There are various tools and toolings which Apple does not include or else it provides older versions that we need for, uh, for, for Mac OS. Uh, one of the things that I do install inside of user local, and you'll need to be able to do this as well, is a relatively recent version uh, of Apache Ant. Uh, 1.9 or 1.10 are perfectly fine. Uh, we're just using um, 1.9 in this particular case. Uh, you also need something which is, um, you know, part of the heritage, part of the legacy uh, of Apache Open Office. Uh, Apache Open Office has a very long and storied build environment. Uh, really is in some ways a hodgepodge of, uh, of different tools and different toolings based on its long history inside of the open source world. Um, we are in the process of moving everything over to the uh, standard GNU make system, but really in general, the overall make system is, is based around this tool called DMake uh, for distributed make. Um, I believe it started off at, at Sun under Sun OS. Uh, we do have a version available on my uh, GitHub repo. I have a, a copy of that that you can download and configure and run. It's very, very easy to do so. Just, uh, you know, dash slash configure. You want to install it in user local. And it takes care of the actual driving of the configuration and the build system inside for open office. You also need something called EPM, which is the program manager. This is basically the tool that takes everything that open office contains and packages it up for the operating system or the platform that you'll be running it on. For example, for Linux, uh, EPM is responsible for grabbing all the bits and pieces together and either creating a dev file or an RPM file so you can install it there. For, for Mac OS, it's, uh, it, create, uh, it goes ahead and creates the, uh, the disk image as well as the package installer as well. So that really is a, a required tool to create an installable version of uh, Apache OpenOffice. Uh, if you don't need that, if you just want to copy files over, you can most probably do that. But I would really recommend that you download and install EPM uh, to make sure that you're able to, to run it and install it with all the bits and pieces, all the dependencies, all the links in there for good. A couple other dependencies that you need um, is a relatively uh, recent version of, of OpenSSL. Again, this is just a build tool requirement inside there. We do bundle OpenSSL inside of Apache OpenOffice for the things that it needs SSL access for. But in particular, we need to also install uh, a newer version of OpenSSL for building and configuring and some other aspects as well. So you'll need to install that. Uh, I also found it easier uh, for Mac OS to download and install uh, two other uh, XML-related uh, libraries, uh, uh, XML2 as well as XSLT. These are XML-related uh, toolings that you require. Uh, the versions included with, uh, with Mac OS really aren't optimal, and it's really better not to have the actual build process try to download and install it for you. Instead, do that for you. Basically, these are things that you want uh, when you're building and configuring Apache Open Office to find in user local and use instead of it having to download and create it yourself or looking for a different version someplace else. So these are basically just newer versions that we want to ensure are bundled with Apache Open Office when we build it. Uh, we also want a version of, of a package config because that's really what the autocom system looks for. Uh, that's how it determines what libraries are available and where the include files are. So you want that inside. Uh, and finally, a uh, 1.7 version of the Java uh, JDK. Now you can use uh, 1.8. Uh, you can use later versions as well. Uh, however, the default 1.6 version that was included many, many, many eons ago by Apple simply uh, will not work. So you'll need to actually download that. Now, it can be open JDK. It doesn't need to be the formal official uh, Oracle JDK, but you do need something of the 1.7 at the uh, at the youngest uh, period inside there. Um, 
Now, I do most of these things by hand, for example, for DMake, uh, EPM, uh, OpenSSL. I actually download the, uh, the, the tarball distributions from their canonical site and build it myself. Now, you could use uh, a package manager for Mac OS, such as Homebrew or uh, Mac ports to install it inside there. But I actually prefer not muddying things around. I like using uh, you know, Homebrew or Mac ports for tools that I need to use, but I don't necessarily want to build on top of. So if that, for example, you'll see that I still use uh, 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 op, uh, Mac ports for some things that I need, like newer versions of AutoConf and GNU tool and Pro 5 and Git and other things that uh, may or may not come with the, the version of Mac OS and Xcode that I'm using, but I make sure they're installed in op local. And I only put inside of user local the things that I definitely want to make sure that when I'm building OpenOffice, the configure autocomp system sees and looks at. So that's the reason why there is that definition, that distinction between what's an op local and then what's in user local. You want to have some uh, local environments. Basically, you want to make sure that user local bin uh, is in your path. If you're putting stuff inside there, you want to ensure that uh, Java Home is set up uh, because of the way Java is set up and enabled inside of uh, 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 Mac OS. You could just do, you know, Java Home equals blah, 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 whatever. But I think it's much easier to use this configuration right here and use uh, the libexec uh, Java underscore home command because that takes care of setting up everything to ensure that Java Home points to the correct locations. And then again, some final catch-alls, making sure that because we're using our own installed version of Ant, making sure that Ant Home points to that location, making sure also that various uh, include directives for the compilers, both the C and the C++ compilers, are looking in the right location for header files that might be going on inside there. Um, and then we have a, uh, a basically a, a simple look right here of the actual configuration aspect. Um, I won't go into all these details inside here. Uh, what you can do though, inside of the, uh, the Apache OpenOffice DevTools subversion repo, we actually include a copy of the build scripts, the actual configure script used to build those um, uh, community uh, platforms as well as the output of the configure log as well. So you can use those to not only figure out how we build, but also what that build looks like. So with this little bit of information inside here, let's go and actually look at the system that we're gonna be using to actually build on Mac OS. So I will be again switching over to my VMware uh, partition. Uh, you should be able to see that uh, right now. Um, and uh, this a little bit of information about this uh, partition, I'm using, I believe, six uh, virtual CPUs on this. Uh, I am using for this particular uh, build environment right here, uh, Mac OS Mojave uh, 10.15.6. Uh, younger versions, have Sierra and stuff like that work fine. Um, also, I have uh, built it on Catalina. That, again, works fine. I have not tried Big Sur yet, um, mostly because I run into some issues with Xcode 12. Um, there are some changes inside of, I don't know whether it's the header files or libraries or whatever, but it messes up auto config, uh, that it's not finding the right tools and not finding the right libraries. It thinks uh, certain system parameters are a little bit different. So at least for the time being, I would not recommend running on Big Sur unless you're using auto comps, uh, unless you're using Xcode 11 and not Xcode 12. In that case, you should be working uh, fine inside there. Uh, as you see, it's just a small number of CPUs. I'm just using 16 uh, gigabytes of RAM, hardly anything at all. 
Um, and it works really, really well. I can actually do a total complete build for, for Mac OS from start to finish, I guess in about uh, three hours or so uh, on this platform right here. So let's go through uh, very, very quickly what we would do to, to actually start off. As I said before, you do a Git clone and you pull down the, um, uh, the repository and you would get a, uh, a small little top level directory like this. And we actually move into the main subdirectory. You can see a number of different files inside here. These are all included inside um, and they include all the bits and pieces required. You also see right here, this is actually a link to the actual build tool that uh, we use to make the community uh, commercial versions, not commercial, the community versions of it. Uh, but let me show you what that looks like uh, real quick. So let me uh, pull that up. Uh, also inside here, I have a lot more detail as well. So in addition to having uh, all this information available on the, uh, on the uh, AOO wiki, I actually have it in the config file as well. And you can see again, uh, the determination of what's included in user local, what's uh, what's user in, in op local. Again, if you want to use Homebrew, that's certainly fine. Uh, what the system environment looks like, and again, what the what the platforms are. Uh, I have this of uh, the script enabling us to detail various lowest common denominators for Mac OS. You'll need that. See that right here. We say that I am building for. Mac OS 10.7, which is an incredibly, incredibly old version. Um, but again, you know, what we want to do is ensure that people who are stuck on such a very, very old version can actually, you know, run it and, and work with it and things like that. Uh, you don't need to set this environment variable when you're building on your own, but, but we do in the configuration builds. Um, so, uh, for this build, I'm going to be specifying a minimal macOS version of 10.7. I'm going to be using a 1.7 version of Java and an Ant version of 1.9. And this basically just changes some of the selections when you're doing the, the configure inside here. You'll see that basically what these things do when you're setting these environment variables or the, these configurations are either set up build environments that are then passed to the configure line or else set up uh, environment variables. For example, if I'm setting up a different uh, Java home, then that's basically just something that needs to be set at the environment variables. Uh, if I'm doing Ant, then not only do I need to set up that Ant environment, but I also need to make sure that that is passed to the configure uh, tooling as well. So when it's looking for Ant, it knows where to find it. Uh, I also build for basically every possible language that uh, Apache OpenOffice is available for. And then we just go ahead and send the configure. So in this particular case, let me just go and walk through some of the configurations that we'll be talking about. As I said before, uh, what we like to do is make sure that when you do an about open office, you get some build information, uh, the version that was built, the date was built, what platform is built for. And that's what this line uh, right here does. Uh, we want to enable uh, open LDAP. Uh, so it's able to actually figure in and, and pull in uh, LDAP capabilities as well. We include a bunch of features, including Bean Shell, all the bundled libraries. Uh, Category B toolings are things which may not necessarily be under an Apache license or a permissive license, maybe under either a strong or weak copy left, but we want to in there and make sure that people are able to actually build and use for this, these configurations as well. You see that we specify what the Java home is. We need to specify that uh, here at the uh, configure line tooling, but also at the environment variable, the same as at home. Right here, we're also specifying where we are putting those two build tools, as I mentioned before, EPM is the packager and DMake is the actual build tool itself. This is basically just says, okay, how do you build it? How do you want to run it? Um, what configuration options do you want? And then we go ahead and at least in this script and say, yes, I want to go ahead and 
uh, run the builds. So let's just really, very really quickly just see what that looks like in that environment. So as you see, one of the first things it does is it specifies to me what the, uh, the environment variables are. It's starting the build. Um, and then it goes ahead and says, hey, you know, I'm doing an auto comp. I'm checking whether the configuration is up to date. And it gives this nice little screen. And then at this point, you get the configure output. This is basically what AutoConf does. It goes through, scans everything that's installed on Mac OS or your other platform and figures out not only how to build what capabilities and features to include in OpenOffice, but also where things are. For example, right here, it's looking for, uh, you know, C compiler looking for GCC, and it's seeing that it's included under uh, applications Xcode X app. Uh, so that takes care of all that for us. Um, and we'll see, you know, also as well, sorry for the long scrolling in here, but it really is a very, very long configuration process inside there. But you can see that it's looking to find everything that we need to make sure if there was any issues or concerns with the build, it would basically tail out and tell you what the issues are. At the very, very end of the configuration style, um, it sets up the build environment variable. And one of the um, interesting things about uh, Apache OpenOffice's build is that it uses a lot of information as far as the build process and the build environment as an environmental variable. So after you do the configuration, you actually have to load in that uh, the environment. You've got to go and source the environment uh, source tree that's associated with, and that's what we're doing uh, right here. Uh, it's basically saying, hey, I'm going to be loading in everything inside the configuration file and the environment file that was just in, and these are the environment variables that uh, that we're going to be using. So you can see things such as, you know, where the ant is, what kind of J JDK we're using, as well as various build environments. You know, whether we're doing an updater, uh, where uh, uh, GDK is, where all the GNOME uh, information is as well. For example, obviously for Mac OS, we're not using uh, any kind of GNOME uh, tooling, whereas for Linux it would be. And we're basically running how, making sure all this information. And again, this is all very, very good information for you to know how it's building. And then finally, after it reports this information to you, it just goes ahead and starts cranking out the build. Um, uh, first thing it needs to do before it cranks out a build is look for some external dependencies. Um, and that's what this area right here is. These are all things that are looked for externally. And if there aren't available inside of a specific directory, inside of the uh, uh, open off the source tree, it would download those compile and build. As you see, since I've done this a number of times, um, these downloads have already been fulfilled. It already sees that I've downloaded those. Um, the checksums are okay, so we know it's up to date. Uh, and we're already built a number of those. If you haven't done that, or if you'll be doing this at the very, very start, um, it would not only download things like you know the cross-core fonts, but actually build it for you as well and install them inside this specific uh, directory that then once you're building and packaging, it can look for. And then it goes to go through and starts building all the bits and pieces inside that are required. Some externally driven, some internally driven. And that's what that information is right as well. Uh, as you can see, we're building like crazy. Uh, it, it's pretty fast. Uh, we have it set up to ensure that it's using as many cores as possible. So uh, uh, make and demake are distributing the load out to all the available CPUs available. And as I said before, after about uh, two, three hours or so, you will get a suite of disk images that includes an Apache uh, Open Office installer. So uh, let me uh, quit that real quick. Let's go back to the actual um, screen itself. Uh, we're running a little bit uh, close uh, to the end of time. Um, I do want to leave a little bit of time for Q&A if there is any, 
But again, I just want to uh, assure you that uh, building uh, open office is is very very easy to do. It does take some time. There are just a few little things to to, to worry about, a few little hurdles. Uh, uh, as I said before, some um, external programs that you need need to install. But it's really very very straightforward. I encourage you to give it a shot. Uh, fire it off. Get yourself a nice cup of coffee or maybe an adult beverage and come back. I will also show you the locations for those wiki entries. So let me do that right now. For the uh, generic uh, building guide, uh, that is the location uh, right there. So if you just go to wiki.openoffice.org, uh, you'll see the, uh, the information right there. Uh, and for the, uh, the Mac OS version, actually it comes straight from here. So you can see that in addition to uh, the generic information about how to download and where things are, and this is good reading if you're, if you're curious about it. Uh, we also have more specific uh, information. Uh, we have step-by-step -step building guides for a whole bunch of platforms. Uh, Ubuntu, CentOS, CentOS 5 is what we use for our uh, Canonical um, community build server for Apache OpenOS 4.1.x. And we use CentOS 7 for 4.2 and above, but you can also build it on all kinds of environments right here. And it's also from this page that we go into how to build for, scroll, 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 building on Mac OS. Very, very easy to do so. Um, I encourage everyone to give it a try. Uh, Mac OS really is a really nice uh, build uh, platform. Uh, I've been a uh, really big, um, you know, believer in that. Uh, I think what I will try to do is put my uh, uh, build script uh, not only in the uh, in the dev tools uh, place, which, as you said before, is where I put it, but maybe as uh, and as an example in the uh, in the main directory, in the main build directory. Um, so I think it's a really really good suggestion. Uh, running close on time. I appreciate everyone attending. Um, uh, unless anyone has any questions, and I don't see any, I will give you back a little bit of time, uh, give you an opportunity to uh, refresh yourselves until the next session. I hope everyone is having a fantastic Apache Con. And again, keep the faith. Apache Open Office is here to stay. It is definitely alive. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.